Imagine you haven't had a drink in two days. Your throat is parched. Your skin is cracking. You are desperate for just one sip of cool, refreshing water. Someone hands you a glass. You bring it to your lips, and suddenly your body revolts. Your throat slams shut. You start gagging, shaking, terrified. You aren't just afraid. You are physically incapable of drinking. This isn't a scene from a fictional horror movie. This is the final stage of the deadliest virus known to mankind, rabies. Welcome. Today we are talking about a monster that doesn't live under your bed, but perhaps in the woods behind your house. We often think of viruses as things that give us a fever or a cough, but rabies is different. Rabies is a neuroinvasive architect. It doesn't just make you sick, it fundamentally rewires your brain. It changes who you are. Consider this terrifying statistic. The mortality rate of untreated symptomatic rabies is virtually 100%. Not 99, 100. If you show symptoms, you will die. There is no cure, there is no going back. Throughout history, this virus has shaped our darkest myths. When you hear legends of werewolves, humans losing their minds, becoming aggressive, biting others, howling at the moon, you are likely hearing the echoes of ancient rabies outbreaks. Even the vampire myth, with its fear of light or photophobia, and the repulsion to strong smells like garlic, mirrors the sensory overload of a rabies patient. But the biological reality is far scarier than any vampire. It usually starts with a bite. Maybe a stray dog, a raccoon, or a bat you didn't even feel graze your skin while you slept. At that moment, the clock starts ticking. But, and this is the insidious part, you feel nothing. The wound heals, you go on with your life. You go to work, you hang out with friends, this is the incubation period. It can last a week, a month, or in rare cases, over a year. During this time, the virus is playing a game of hide and seek with your immune system, and it is winning. It's quiet, too quiet. That is how the virus survives. Most viruses enter your blood and spread like wildfire, alerting your immune system immediately. Rabies does the exact opposite. It stays out of the blood. It's a stealth operative. After the bite, the virus finds a nerve ending, usually in the muscle tissue near the wound. It binds to the nerve receptors and enters the highway of your nervous system. Specifically, it hijacks the transport system that your cells use to move proteins. It begins a slow retrograde climb up your nerves moving closer and closer to the spinal cord. Think of it like a burglar climbing a ladder, rung by rung, heading toward the attic. But in this case, the attic is your brain. Because it travels inside the nerves, your white blood cells, the cops of your body, can't see it. It is invisible to your defenses. It travels about 12 to 24 millimeters a day, a slow, inevitable march toward the control center. Once it reaches the spinal cord, the speed picks up. It rockets toward the brain. And this is when the nightmare truly begins. The virus targets the limbic system first. This is the primitive part of your brain responsible for emotions, survival instincts, and aggression. It doesn't want to kill you yet. It needs you. This is where the evolutionary genius of rabies comes into play. If a virus kills its host too fast, the virus dies too. So rabies changes the host's behavior to ensure transmission. It increases aggression. It removes inhibition. In animals, this is why a nocturnal fox might suddenly appear during the day, fearless and biting. The virus is driving the car now. It is literally pulling the levers of the animal's mind, forcing it to bite to spread the virus into a new host. In humans, the symptoms begin vaguely, a fever, a headache, 
may be a tingling sensation at the sight of the old bite, a ghost of the mistake you made months ago. This tingling is the virus finally reaching the central nervous system. Anxiety sets in, confusion, agitation, and then the water. This brings us to the most famous and most misunderstood symptom, hydrophobia, the fear of water. It sounds psychological, like a phobia of spiders or heights, but it is not psychological. It is a violent physiological rejection. The virus has multiplied in the brain, but it has also migrated to the salivary glands. To spread, the virus must be in the saliva and it must be transmitted via a bite. If the host swallows that saliva, the virus goes into the stomach and is wasted. So the virus triggers painful, agonizing spasms in the throat and larynx. Every time the patient tries to swallow, their throat locks up in excruciating pain. Eventually, the mere sight or sound of pouring water triggers the spasm. The brain develops a conditioned response of terror. The virus is essentially engineering you to become a walking, biting reservoir of infected saliva. It prevents you from swallowing so that your mouth is frothing, ready to infect the next victim. It is a level of biological cruelty that is hard to comprehend. As the disease progresses, the patient enters the furious stage. They may hallucinate, they become hyperactive. A sudden breeze on their skin can cause convulsions. This is called aerophobia. They are trapped in a body that is torturing them, often oscillating between moments of total madness and moments of terrified clarity. You might be wondering, is there any hope? <clears throat> in 2004, a glimmer of hope appeared. A teenager named Gina Geese survived symptomatic rabies without a vaccine. Doctors placed her in a medically induced coma to protect her brain while her immune system fought the virus. It was called the Milwaukee Protocol. For years, this was hailed as the cure. But here is the tragic truth. It has been tried dozens of times since then, and it has failed almost every single time. Most experts now believe Gina's survival was due to a rare genetic anomaly or a weaker strain of the virus, not the coma itself. So we are back to square one. Once the headache starts, the game is over. It's a heavy topic, I know, but here is the most important part of this video, the part that could save your life. Despite being 100% fatal once symptoms start, rabies is also 100% preventable. We owe a massive debt to Louis Pasteur. In 1885, he developed the first rabies vaccine. Today, we have something called PEP, post-exposure prophylaxis. If you are bitten by a wild animal or a dog you don't know, or, and I cannot stress this enough, if you wake up in a room with a bat, even if you don't see a bite mark, go to the hospital immediately. Do not wait. Do not wait and see if it gets infected. If you get the series of shots before the virus reaches the brain, the virus is stopped dead in its tracks. Your body creates antibodies that intercept the invader before it climbs the ladder to your mind. It is a race against time, but it is a race you can win if you act fast. Every year, rabies still kills about 59,000 people globally mostly children in developing countries where vaccines are scarce. But for those of us with access to healthcare, this monster is manageable. We have tamed many beasts in this world. We have conquered apex predators. But the rabies virus serves as a humbling reminder. It reminds us that nature is complex, intelligent, and sometimes terrifyingly ruthless. It reminds us that the line between human and zombie is just a tiny strip of RNA. So respect the wild, keep your pets vaccinated, and stay away from the raccoons. If you found this deep dive into the viral world interesting, hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.